my name is Morgan and I'm a neuroscience researcher and I just found out that someone made a short film about Phineas Gage. So if you're unfamiliar, I made a video about Phineas Gage a while back. It was one of my very first videos. I'll link it somewhere up here. And I actually have a tattoo of Phineas Gage on my shoulder. Um, so huge fan. <laughs> The story of Phineas Gage is one that has fascinated neuroscientists for a really long time. And even though now we believe a lot of it is probably apocryphal and maybe um, not super true, that doesn't change the fact that it sparked a huge interest in the brain. The story of Phineas Gage is one of the first reasons why we started looking at the brain as the center of emotion and where all of our thoughts and feelings come from. So of course I'm gonna do a neuroscientist reacts to Gage. So it looks like the short film was made in 2014 and it's around 14 minutes long. So we should be able to get through this in one part. And I'm just gonna compare this uh, short film to what I know about Phineas Gage. Um, I haven't done any research for this ahead of time. I did do research for the original video that I made about Phineas Gage. So like I should know a lot about him off the top of my head, um, but maybe I'll also learn something new. I'm just really excited for this, so let's start. He wanders up and down the Atlantic coast, battling ruffians, casting spurs. Mm. Loved, feared, shamed, but always remembered. So that was a dramatic opening, which we love. Um, I do believe that Phineas Gage did travel with a circus for a little bit, so I believe that's probably what that's referring to. Maybe we'll find out. Clayton! Yep? Come over here. Grab that barrel. I want you to fill the hole. Not too much, about one third. The rest? We'll fill with sand so it absorbs the impact. <laughs> hey! Let's be professional around here, right? We're playing around. Fit no the <laughs> Oh my god, that foreshadowing, the no messing around. <laughs> Love it. Um, so there's actually two different versions of how this happened that people tell. Um, so this is pretty accurate to the first one, is just that he got distracted on the work site. Um, so what he's doing there is that he's um, using what's called a tamping rod, which is what was used back in like the olden days to um, blow stuff up so you use it to pack in the dynamite and the sand and everything and if you're not careful it will explode so the two versions of this that i've heard are yeah the he got distracted on the work site and that's how the spike um wound up flying through the air and the other version is that he actually had like his own personal tamping rod um that was like his specific one no one else could use it and on that day he didn't have it and so he borrowed someone else's and because he was like unfamiliar with it because he was used to using his own um he used it incorrectly and it blew up and wound up flying through the air oh and in case you can't tell yet that was supposed to be Phineas Gage <laughs> I was there the rod went through his chin, out the top of his head. Mr. Gage, can you hear me? Okay, I'm force it. Yeah, so I feel like they're not really going to go over what the specific injury was, but it's really fascinating how it happened. So, using my little skull here, basically, yeah, it went up through the cheek and out through the top of the head, um, meaning it went through his brain and he lived also supposedly according to people who were on the work site he didn't really notice what had happened like obviously he like felt a little bit of a headache he got like blown back but he just sort of like stood up and like it took a while to process what had just happened understand all of this gasping because it didn't go through his throat like it went so like through the cheek like up into the roof of the mouth up through so it shouldn't have affected his breathing unless maybe like some blood got in there um but also i'm not a medical doctor so like who knows i wasn't there just feels a bit dramatic you know 
Okay, so they're not gonna cover this either. So a lot of what we know about Phineas Gage's story is through the stories of people who were around him. And because of that, there's a lot of like contradicting stories. And also like back then, um, we do have photographs of Phineas Gage. So like photography existed, but obviously like videos and recording and stuff didn't. So we can't fully know for a fact what happened. But I did hear a story one time um, that could be totally made up, but that the um, doctor who was sort of patching him up after all of this happened actually um, like had like a cup of tea in his hand that he was like taking a little sip from and he actually like spilled some of it in Phineas Gage's like skull. Um, I don't know, like, we can't know for a fact whether or not that happened. It would be wild if it did. That could also be taken, I think I've heard that story several different times from different people who had head injuries, so, um, it could just be, like, a mishmash of, um, old legends, but it's still cool to talk about. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Okay, so this is clearly like a very artsy short film. They're not really using a lot of words. Um, I don't know how Phineas Gage's recovery was. I do imagine that it would be something that would be difficult to term come to terms with. Um, I believe based on like all of the photos that we have of him, he did have like that one eye shut uh, permanently, so he couldn't see out of one eye. Um, also, supposedly the way that the story goes is that his emotions changed wildly to where he was like a very angry person after this happened. So I imagine that would make it even more difficult to come to terms with. Ah, good afternoon, Doc. I think I got that gift for you. Good. I don't know what he's going to use that for. I love that he's just walking out of there with the tamping rod. Um, he did he did travel around with his tamping rod, um, like I said, like in a circus. Um, he would go around and like take photos with it. Um, so he he did keep it, but just watching a man walking out of a doctor's office holding that is a pretty funny sight. Hey, mister, show me the hole in your head. <laughs> now get out of here, you little rat shit. Ladies, ladies, up there's a neighbor in the creek. I want you to fit a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, wow. I think that's supposed to be an allusion to his wild mood changes that happened. So supposedly, before he had this incident, he was like a good upstanding citizen went to church every sunday never said a curse word never disrespected a lady um and after he had the incident what happened was i believe it went through his frontal lobe which is where a lot of your decision making and also your like filtering happens so supposedly afterwards he was a lot more crude he was rude to women um he cursed a lot but this is one of the things that we now think is mostly apocryphal and not necessarily true to what actually happened. So essentially his doctor wrote about these wild mood changes and he would also, I believe, like say that these were the things that happened. But his wife also kept a diary and in her diary she was basically like, no, he's the same as he was. Like maybe a, a little bit changed, but not as much as people claimed. 
And, like, other neuroscientists and medical doctors have gone back and looked at the skull and tried to, like, assess the type of injury that he had. And people have had similar injuries since. And most doctors agree that maybe some mood changes would have occurred for a year, maybe two years, but it wouldn't have been, like, a permanent change. Um, Whereas, like, according to this story, it was a permanent change. But like I said, either way, the story did like spark a lot of interest in looking at how the brain controls emotions. So it's still an incredibly important story, um, whether or not it's completely factual. I might be broken the head, but the rest of me is strong as an ox. <laughs> Boy, I don't give a shit what happened to your head. I will have you drag out of here like a dead mule. You sheriff, our goddamn phone. <laughs> this is very dramatic. Aren't you gonna do something? I just think it would be unwise to bring him to dinner tonight. Surely, John, professional boundaries are in place for clinical benefit. See, this is this is what I'm saying. So there's a lot of theorizing now that maybe the doctor might have exaggerated some things in order to gain like the medical prestige. Um, again, we can't know for sure. This is just people, like, theorizing and stuff. I feel like they're kind of alluding to that here with him just sort of, like, watching the fight go down and stuff, stepping in and trying to help. I feel like any morally upstanding doctor would probably step in if they saw someone beating up their patient. Like, that can't be good for recovery. This man no longer has any boundaries. You're a great man, John. But you're only a man. God, in his inscrutable wisdom, has deemed it appropriate to lay this heavy burden on him. I know a lot less about the doctor than I do about Phineas Gage. Dr. Harlow, as you must know, the new fiscal year always brings many new proposals to the table. And I certainly don't need to discourage you in any way, but uh, I must tell you that uh, as a general rule, the town council doesn't look very favorably upon new proposals that are uh, without precedent. I just realized I don't know um, what like time scale this is supposed to be on. If they're saying this was like the next day, or if it's saying like it was a couple months later. But if the tamping rod went through his cheek, at some point he had a giant hole in his cheek. Um, assuming that they had sutures, I'm pretty surely they had sutures back then. Um, it would have been sewn up, but it wouldn't necessarily be that like scar tissue yet. So I'm curious, like, if he used to, like, whenever he drank, maybe, like, a little liquid shout out, because their sutures weren't, like, the level that they are today. Um, just a thought. John, <clears throat> what do you propose the treasurer bring to the council on your behalf? Surely you thought this through. The prominence right now of cholera in Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia has instituted some uh, public health measures that I, I, I believe would work well here in Cavendish. Phineas, would you please pass the green beans? <coughs> Mr. Trevor, how else. do you plan to make sure that the, the railroad workers have proper shelter for winter? <laughs> well, uh, as I'm sure you're... Honestly, a lot of this behavior could just be explained by class differences. Phineas Gage was like just a railroad worker and therefore part of like the lower working class, whereas the doctor would have been um, held in more esteem and part of like the upper class. So like him having his elbows on the table and chewing with his mouth open might just be because he hadn't been in this sort of company before. You're aware, Mr. Gage. Railroad is of the utmost importance to Cavendish. So we will have uh, two of our most talented engineers will be working with Ruben Burlington to erect our friend tents. For Chinamen as well? As far as the budget allows, all will be included. Well, what's wrong, Mr. Treasurer? Is the city council's whore budget a little bit higher than it was last year? Excuse me? How dare you? Don't forget, Mrs. Edwards. Mr. Gage has been through some traumatic times recently. Let's get some air for this. What's really interesting is, uh, from this portrayal, um, so like I said, supposedly he sort of like lost his filter of um, the words that he 
would say and so like in the sort of company it was probably like impolite to bring up the railroad whenever they're discussing medical issues and then to bring up race issues um also like whoo uh but it's also just painting him in this like really progressive light and um that he like truly cares about these issues which is kind of neat because so the concept is that he doesn't have a filter so these are like the thoughts that are going through his head so whenever he's like uh, whenever the governor i guess was like oh yeah we'll make sure that the railroad workers have cover and he was like for the people from for the chinese people as well that was his initial thought and reaction to that which is um like cool of a white man back then Again, like, who knows if he said or did any of this stuff, or if this was just, like, a film choice from uh, whoever wrote the script, but either way, pretty cool. suits you, doesn't it? Sit down. Well, that's something. That's funny person at your house. I was counting on their support for my practice. No place now. Uh... Let me see that thing. So like I said, I know a lot less of this from the point of view of the doctor. This feels like an interesting choice if it's not historical. So I feel like hopefully they like read this in one of the doctor's diaries or something because this scene feels really intense if it's made up. If you're aiming to kill. I don't understand any of these decisions, but it might just be because I don't get RT film. <laughs> Keep your arm up. Helps with the aim. Why are you doing this, John? Doing what? That this goddamn town hates me. But you? You won't go away. According to lore, um, it's for the money. <laughs> it's for the prestige. Nobody in this town expected you to live, Finn. For most, it's almost as if you didn't. You know, I feel that for most of my life I battled some hideous unseen wound myself. There were um, quite a few people, I believe, but especially the doctor said um, that basically um, Phineas Gage did die the day that the tamping rod went through his school and what came out was a completely different person. And that's kind of part of the reason why we think he's exaggerating just a little bit because um like i said the doctors and the scientists who have like analyzed the skull and the injury um really believe that he wouldn't have changed as extremely <laughs> sorry my cat's trying to knock over all of my stuff um but they believe that he wouldn't have changed like as extremely as um the doctor claims never want anybody to know it's there Kate! What? 
My fiance says you propositioned her. Oh. <laughs> Any bitch that would lie down with you. I wouldn't cut with a stick of dynamite. Duck! Boy makes it out of this. I'm gonna take the person to St. Mary's Hospital. Oh, bitch. Okay, I was like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't die in a gunfight. He lived for like a good like 15 to 20 years after the incident. You are done in this town, Harlow! I do enjoy this concept though that he would just carry the rod with him around town. I don't know whether or not he did that, but it's pretty funny. So yeah, that was the movie Gage, or short film. Um, I thought that was really fun to go through. I feel like they got a lot of it pretty um, pretty accurate. I would say like the factual, or well, like I said, none of it's like super fact. It's all based on different people's diaries and different people's accounts. Um, but it felt pretty accurate to the stories that I've heard. Um, it was really good. Like I said, a little artsy. I'm not sure how many of those like interactions happen that way, um, but that's different people's film choices. It's fine. Cool. So this has been a neuroscientist reacts to the short film Gage. Um, please let me know if there's any other uh, short films, movies, TV shows, YouTube videos, whatever that you would like to see a neuroscientist react to. Oh, TikToks. Recently, I was asked to react to the movie Flatliners, and I am planning on doing that. I just need to figure out exactly how I want to go about it because a movie is so long. So I would probably have to split it into like four parts or I'm considering doing it as like a live. Um, I haven't fully figured that out yet, but don't worry, I did hear you and I will be doing it. If you're interested in seeing more content from me, you can check out my other social medias. I post pretty frequently on TikTok and I will see you the next time I feel like posting. Bye.